Welcome to our lecture online. To get a better understanding of what the second moment of error is, we're going to actually calculate one. So here we have a beam that's sitting on its edge. We've drawn three axes. We have the x-axis going this way, the y-axis going this way, and the z-axis going perpendicular through the cross-section. We're first going to calculate the second moment of area relative to the x-axis. In other words, we're trying to find the area multiplied times the distance to the x-axis of each small little dA all the way across the cross-section and sum them all up. Of course, that's equal to the integral. And here we have it defined. It's equal to the double integral because we have to integrate over the x direction and over the y direction multiplied times y squared, which is the distance from the x-axis to any small segment of the cross-sectional area. And that will give us the, what we call, second moment of area relative to the x-axis. Of course, we still have our y squared here, and dA will simply be dx times dy. Notice the limits of integration go from minus h over 2 to plus h over 2, and from minus b over 2 to plus b over 2. Let's go ahead and integrate and see what we get. So we have to integrate across dy. So we'll do this integral first. Oh, no, let's do the x first. Let's do, so we'll integrate over the x. So this is equal to x evaluated from minus b over 2 to b over 2, because when we integrate dx, we simply get x, times the integral of y squared dy going from minus h over 2 to h over 2. When we plug in the limits, then we get the following. This is equal to plug in the upper limit, we get b over 2 minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get minus b over 2, and we multiply that times the integral of minus h over 2 to plus h over 2 of y squared dy. Of course, here you can see that when the negative cancels out the negative, so we have b over 2 plus b over 2, which is simply b. So this becomes equal to b times this integral, which will be y cubed over 3, evaluated at from minus h over 2 to plus h over 2. So we plug in the limits, we get the following. So we'll pull the 3 out, we get b over 3 times upper limit, that gives us h cubed over 8, because 2 cubed is 8, minus a minus h cubed over 8. And of course, the minus will cancel out the minus, so this will give us b over 3 times h cubed over 4. So we can simplify that by saying that i relative to the x-axis is equal to 1 twelfth b h cubed. So that's what we call the second moment of area relative to the x-axis. Now we can do the same relative to the y-axis. So relative to the y-axis, we get i, relative to the y-axis, is equal to the double integral. But now, of course, we have to do it relative to the y-axis. So now we have to consider the x-distance. So we have x squared times dA. The limits will be the same as before. But now what you'll see is that the result, when we work through that, we get i sub y is equal to 1 twelfth b cubed times h. Now notice, since b is a much smaller number, this will be a much smaller quantity. This will be a much larger quantity since h is large. Then finally, the total second moment of area that we then we would use as the torsional constant is simply going to be equal to i sub x plus i sub y. We simply add them together. Now we'll show you later why we can do that, but here we're just taking it on faith for now. So we we'll plug that in, so this will be equal to 1 twelfth b h cubed plus 1 twelfth b cubed h. And of course, when we factor out the, the common terms, we can say that's equal to 1 twelfth b times h. And then what we have left is we have an h square plus b square like that. And so this would be the torsional constant we would use for a beam put up on its side 
And if we want to use them to try and figure out what it would take to twist that beam, of course, then we will use this value right here for the torsional constant. And that's where it came from. It comes out of the calculation of what we call the second moment of area. And that's how it's done.